In this Windows 10 tutorial, specifically designed for seniors, I'm going to cover Windows Start button, Taskbar and Status Bar, Settings app, Windows Desktop, File Explorer, and Windows Security Updates. When you first log in into Windows 10, you see Start button, which you can click to get access to additional features, Cortana bar, then you have list of applications that are linked to the uh, taskbar, then you have a status bar, and then you have a very uh, quick button to get to the desktop. It's barely visible here on the taskbar. First, let's look at the start button. When you click the start button, you see a combination of what was available in Windows 10, Windows 8, and uh, got morphed a little bit uh, when Windows 10 was introduced. So this is the classic start menu. Uh, you see the list of all the applications, uh, which starts with recently added applications. And then in alphabetical order, based on each letter, it shows you what's installed on your computer. Now, some applications, as you can see, they have this arrow to the right, and which means that this is a folder and applications underneath of this error, uh, actual applications that you would need to click uh, that are located in that particular folder. Here on the left, there is a section um, that shows you different functions, frequently used functions that are available. For example, the user ID for, that I'm using to record this video called video recording. And uh, this button shows you that you can switch between different users in your computer. You can expand this view of the start uh, and switch between the users. This is what this first button is for. You can access documents uh, for the given user, access pictures, or access settings um, available uh, to you as a Windows 10 user. You can also obviously shut down, uh, power off, and there are different options for sleep, shut down, and restart of the computer. On the right, uh, it's a tiles menu, which is useful for touchscreen devices. And there are three categories for the tiles, uh, create, play, and explore. Uh, and it's, like I said, it's especially useful for the users that um, using the touchscreen devices. As you can see, tiles is Microsoft's invention. And uh, they are very useful if you don't just use the mouse, but use rather touchscreen, because they're bigger and much easier to click. Settings app is the simplified version of Control Panel that was available in Windows for a long time. Control Panel is still available. You can access it if you type the name of the applications in Cortana bar, Control Panel, and it shows up first on the list. And you can see and compare uh, settings uh, in the Settings app and in Control Panel that are available. I have them side by side which are pretty much similar, but if you use to more con to control panel, that it's probably going to be much easier for you to use, especially knowing that it's still available. Let me show you the easy way to access settings uh, through the Start button. If you right-click on the Start button, you see that a lot of uh, features available, uh, and we see Settings here, we see File Explorer, Search, and even run, as well as shut down or sign out for the user and access to the desktop. So same settings app I just showed to you. You can just right click on the start menu and select settings and it's available. I'm going to click close and close Windows settings app. Now let's look at the tiles section on the start menu. So in tile section, you see tiles. And as you can see, they're organized by groups and tiles are of the different size. If you right click on the tile, you have different options that are available. You can unpin from start, which will remove it, uh, not the app itself, but it will just unpin and it will not show up. That's what pinning means. You can resize it and there are four different sizes available. This is the medium size of the square. You can do a small size. Uh, you can also resize and make a wide size and you can make a large size. Those are four different sizes that are available. I'm going to return it back to the medium size as it was, and as you can see, it fits nicely. And if I drag and drop tiles, um, especially if they match with the uh, space available, uh, you can organize them uh, very nicely on your desktop. Each tile, also tile app, most of them also have uh, additional settings, like for weather app. Uh, so you can go and go into the app settings. You can some tiles are live tiles, like for example, weather might show you the live weather based on your region selection, and you can configure it in settings. And you have some other additional options that are available. Let's look at the uh, task bar, and this is the bar at the bottom of the screen, uh, which has multiple things. It has 
applications that could be opened based on your selection. For example, if you click on the Edge browser, you can open the Edge browser um, here on the screen. Uh, you can uh, also see some other already opened applications. Uh, and indication that uh, some application is opened is in this line that at the bottom of the application. You can also add additional applications to the taskbar. And the reason you might want to do it is so you can quickly launch them uh, when you need to. For example, I do have Excel here uh, pinned. The function of adding applications to taskbar is called pinning them because you're not actually adding application or deleting. You're just pinning an existing application or unpinning an existing application. You see right now I have Excel because I quickly uh, can launch it. Uh, I use it very frequently. So I can just click on Excel and uh, it launches Microsoft Excel. But I don't have uh, Microsoft Word available. So let me walk you through the steps of how to add Microsoft Word. To do that, you can type Word. Um, and uh, there are multiple ways to do it. You can launch it. And it shows up here. Uh, and this is Excel that showed up uh, after a while. But I'm going to switch to Word. Um, so you see uh, that Word is running right now because the, there is a line under the application which shows that ap application is active. But if I close Word, it disappears from the taskbar. Unlike Excel, if I close Excel, Excel will stay. It just the line underneath Excel will disappear. So let me launch Word again. And now I would like to pin Word to taskbar so it will be available even after I close Microsoft Word. To do that, I do right mouse click. And there are options here. One of them is pin to taskbar. And now, when I close Word, Word still is available and I can launch it uh, when I need to. As you can see, a lot of functions in Windows are available through right mouse click. So when you do right mouse click on the uh, taskbar, it shows a menu that's specific to taskbar. And one feature that you might find very useful is the fact that uh, you can move taskbar on the screen. Right now it's at the bottom, but that does not mean that it has to stay in the bottom. The only reason it it's fixed right now is because it's locked. But if you select unlock taskbar, then you can drag and drop it. It could be on the right. It could be on the top if you like it to. And you just need to find the empty space uh, which you can use to drag it um, from place to place. And you can move it around the screen and all other windows um, adjust based on your moves. I'm going to move it back. Uh, and lock it again. Let me close Edge Browser and let's focus on Cartana Bar, which is to the left of all the application icons that's available on the desktop. Cartana is the new feature of uh, Windows 10 and it can do a lot of cool things. It can identify the song, it can search the web, uh, can do calculations and conversions, track flights and packages, find some cool facts. It's the competitor of um, Apple's Siri and uh, Google Home, Google Assistant uh, that's available. And uh, you can do a lot of good things here. For example, let me convert 195 pounds to kilograms. And as you can see, I, start, I stopped typing and it immediately uh, converted it, which tells me I need to lose some weight. Um, but uh, you can do a lot of good things. Uh, for this particular one, I think it searches the web and just presents you the results. But some of the features are native, and it doesn't even have to search the web. Obviously, if you're planning to ask Cortana questions and get answers, you would need to have microphone built in and the speaker so you can communicate with Cortana using the microphone. If you're planning to ask Cortana a question, uh, what you might want to do is click the microphone button, and it will engage the microphone, and you can ask the question. Since I'm recording right now, I'm not sure how exactly it's going to work. Uh, so I'm just going to type a question. Um, and for example, I live in Milwaukee. And you can ask, uh, what is the weather in Milwaukee? And uh, the screen comes up, and it shows you what the weather forecast. Right now, as you can see, it's connected to Bing Engine. But you can reconfigure in Windows if you prefer any other search engines like Google, which you might. Uh, you can definitely reconfigure. And uh, you will see uh, a Google's weather forecast, which may or may not be different. To the right of the application settings, we have a status bar. 
Status bar is the combination of icons for the settings that are uh, of the applications that are installed and being used. And not all of them are presented, but if you click at this expansion arrow, it shows you the remaining ones that are missing. If you would like to get more, for example, a quick note, you can just drag it into the taskbar. And if you'd like to remove it back, you just drag it and it puts it back into this extensions menu. You also obviously have date and time. And I mentioned that there is a button here that allows you to quickly access the desktop. And this is how you would use it. Um, for example, you have Word launched, and if you want to get access to desktop, and imagine that there might, may be a lot of other applications installed, you just click on this area here to the right, and if you want to get back to Word, you click it again. I'm going to close Word, and we will look now at the desktop itself. As you can see, desktop area allows you to organize uh, frequently used applications as well. So you have icons for some of the applications that during installation uh, loaded icons onto the desktop. You can organize them manually like I just did here, or you can also um, sort by, for example, name. Uh, you can rearrange them by size, item type, date modified, and uh, you can look them at uh, medium icon, large icons. You can look at them as a small icons, and there are some additional settings related to those uh, desktop icons. Each icon on the desktop uh, has its own set of settings. And if you do select the icon and then do a right mouse click, you can access all the settings, including properties for each app. It shows which uh, where app is located and how to execute it, as well as a lot of different tabs uh, that are available specifically for this application. Desktop itself also has settings. And if you do a right mouse click on the desktop itself, Obviously, you can reorganize uh, the icons, uh, and I just showed you how to do it, and you can click Refresh. Uh, you can also access display-specific settings. So when I click that on the Display Settings option, it launches the Settings app, and here it starts with the display options that are available to you. As you can see, I have three desktops, and I can identify each one. So this is desktop number three, where I'm recording this video, but I have two other desktops. You can rearrange them based on how they are configured. For example, uh, you can put one desktop on top of the other, but this is not my configuration. I have three desktops uh, next to each other in one line. And there are some other settings available. You just need to scroll down. For example, uh, one of the very useful settings is uh, the size of the font uh, and uh, how much text is available. Resolution, um, you have different resolutions available and you choose the best one typically. I choose the best one for recording. Uh, so I have uh, higher resolutions available, which I'm not selecting here. Uh, and I do it so people can see this on the mobile devices as well as on the desktops. And then you can choose uh, what to do with multiple desktops. You can duplicate content on the desktops or you can extend desktops. So each display in your configuration will show its own um, set of applications, its own desktop kind of would be an extension. So when you have three monitors, you will have desktop that would be located on three monitors and you can drag it from one monitor to the other. Let me close uh, Display Settings app, and let's look at the last part, which is the Personalize. This part allows you to personalize your desktop, and it launches the uh, Settings app with the Personalization option. So you can change the background, and you can choose a different picture, or solid color, or slideshow. And you have some options. I have the left one, but if I'd like, I can choose a different option here. And as you can see, as soon as I selected the different option, my uh, desktop content has changed and now I have a different image on the desktop. I'm going to go back to personalize by right mouse clicking um, and I'll choose uh, different options how you would fit. This is helpful um, if your image is not exactly matching the size of your desktop. So you can choose a different options of how you would want to fit. And obviously, if you want to choose your own image, you have to upload it onto the uh, Windows computer and then click Browse to find it uh, and select it so it will show up on your desktop. One of the very important applications available to Windows users is File Explorer. 
So there are multiple ways to launch File Explorer. One of them is from the taskbar, and this is how I'm going to demonstrate it. You just click on the File Explorer, and it has uh, multiple different sections, which we're going to look at momentarily. Quick Access, OneDrive, this PC, Libraries, and Network. Libraries is um, something that was introduced in Windows 7, so you have to enable them. I use them, so I have them available. You may not see libraries in your machine. But let me close File Explorer for now. And I'll show you another alternative ways to launch it. Uh, you do right mouse click on the Start button, and as you can see, File Explorer is available, which is the same applications. And the third way might be through Cartana Bar. If you type File Explorer, uh, this is the first app that uh, shows up. Let's look at the key features of File Explorer. I'm going to launch it again. And uh, as I mentioned, Quick Access is uh, an area where you can pin uh, quickly accessed folders that you need. By default, uh, desktop downloads and documents and pictures are pinned here. If you don't like something being here, you can unpin it. For example, if you don't like uh, maybe pictures uh, be in this area, you can uh, right mouse click and then select unpin from quick access and then it removes uh, pictures from there. As we go down the list, OneDrive is Microsoft's technology that allows you to exchange information. Uh, you have to sign up. Uh, there is a free account, which uh, has, I believe, 15 gigabytes of uh, storage, which is very nice. If you connect it from multiple PCs, you should be able to access uh, OneDrive, uh, which is a cloud storage uh, from Microsoft. And if you need more space, I think there's a paid version of that. Uh, so I clicked on this. It prompts me to enter my email address, assuming I already have an account for signing. If you don't have it, uh, you can sign up uh, with OneDrive. I'm going to close uh, this dialog box and keep going. This PC allows you to access uh, two key folders of uh, this workstation, uh, as well as uh, access to Drive C. Libraries, I mentioned this is the feature that Microsoft is trying to retire. So I uh, use it because I used it since Windows 7, uh, but you uh, do not have to. Quick access is a much nicer equivalent of libraries. And then network allows you to see which uh, workstations are connected to your local network so you can uh, connect to those workstations uh, and exchange data. Let me show you a couple of cool things you can do with File Explorer since, as the uh, name implies, it's very useful to work with the files. So I clicked on the documents and do have some sample documents here. And your view might be different, and I'll explain you why it might be different and how to change the view. So you see names of the files, date modified, type of the file, and size. Sometimes you don't see file extensions. I specifically enabled them. Uh, and I'll show you how to do that in case you're interested. But if you move through the tabs, and this is the ribbon interface, which, uh, as you can see, uh, has multiple tabs. In this case, file, home, share, and view. And you can move between the tabs. And in the home tab, you have most frequently used functions. For example, you can... Uh, have a new folder created by clicking a new folder button and you can has uh, the name of the folder by default it's a new folder name but you can just say it's uh, documents you just type in the name um, in the view you select what type of view um, that you would like to have and you can switch between details which is what I currently have maybe to list view which is more uh, simpler to understand view details has uh, a lot of information or maybe content view uh, or just the icons uh, small extra large or large or medium uh, types of icons uh, what i mentioned to you is that i enabled extensions because i'd like to see what type of file uh, it is before clicking on the file um, and to do that uh, i showed you uh, you need to click on the options again i'm going to walk you through you click on the view and then click on the options uh, button and it brings up the folder options dialog box and there are multiple tabs here one is general tab uh, another one is view tab and this is where you select display uh, file extensions here as well as uh, display some other options so the specific option for file extensions is hide extensions for known file types but i'd like to see everything uh, so i enable a lot of information even i like to see protected operating system files so I'm going to click, uh, show you another tab here, which is search specific tab before I click cancel. Um, so there are some settings of uh, 
allows you to configure, for example, search options um, and then uh, what to do when searching on indexed location. Um, this is helpful uh, because uh, if you search items in Cortana bar, you can also search for local items. And indexing allows you to speed up the search if you have many documents. So you point where the index uh, would be located and in which folders you will be indexing. And then here in Cortana, if you type the name of the document uh, and its index, it will allow you to find the document very quickly. Let me show you a couple ways to work with documents. I'm going to um, select, for example, sample word file here. Uh, and as you can see on the right, it's a quick preview of this file, uh, which is available for certain file types. Uh, for example, Microsoft Word, Excel, any Office product will have it, PDF will have it, and a lot of other applications will have it. So what you can do with the file is um, you can do a right mouse click and you can uh, copy the file. And if you click on another place, uh, you can paste the file, right? So simple copy and paste. And what Microsoft uh, File Explorer did, um, it um, created a duplicate of this file at the bottom and dash copy added a copy uh, to the name of the file. So what I'm going to do, you can uh, copy file in one folder, navigate to another folder, and then paste file in another folder. So I did copy and paste in the same folder just to simplify, uh, and it's good for you to understand what, I, what just happened. But if I, for example, would like to create a duplicate of this file uh, in another folder, I need to click copy, navigate to the folder documents, uh, and then do a paste here, and this will uh, copy and paste file here. Uh, to go back, you click the back button, back to the documents, right? And we see uh, two files because they sorted in alphabetical order. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to show another way to copy documents. I'm going to click on the file and drag and drop it, uh, and I'm going to drop it, and it's going to move the copy file into the documents. I'm going to release the file, and it uh, went right into the documents folder. I'm going to close File Explorer and we will look at a couple other things um, that I wanted to share with you. Number one is um, Power Plan. Uh, this is the desktop I'm running uh, and recording this uh, video with, but you might experience the need of optimize the usage of the battery uh, for your device. So to do that, you need to uh, determine what's the best uh, power plan for you. So you need to click the start button and then click settings and then here you can just type power and sleep settings or edit power plan those are the good settings i'm looking to edit power plan and this shows you what kind of power plan is being used uh, and what happens how quickly display will uh, turn off after you stop using the device and how quickly computer will go to sleep which helps to save battery time if you'd like to look at more details, you click Advanced Power Settings, and this brings up this screen, which would allow you to configure a lot of different options of how battery power is being used. I'm going to click Cancel from this Advanced screen, and I'm going to click Cancel from this um, Power Plan setting. And the last thing I'd like to show you is uh, Windows Update, uh, Windows Update Settings. It's very important to keep your device up to date with Windows Updates. Some of the updates are feature updates, some of them are security updates. It's not as important to download latest feature updates. Um, some of the features, uh, in fact, turns out to be quite buggy, and um, some of them even were deleting user data. So you might want to consider postponing your feature updates, but it's definitely uh, worth uh, looking and downloading securities uh, updates. So in order to check for updates and to see if your workstation is uh, current, you click on this check for updates button and you see that um, I do have some of the things that were missing. So it's very good to make sure that uh, you download and keep your workstation uh, up to date with security updates. A lot of times Windows might require a restart after downloading updates and this is what happened to me. So you can either uh, click restart now or schedule restart or change active hours for when restart is um, available. I'm just going to cancel out this. Let's quickly recap everything we've covered in this tutorial. We started uh, by looking at the Start button in Microsoft Windows 10. We looked at the different areas 
uh, start area and what are the options available. We've looked at how to launch the applications. Uh, you can find applications alphabetically by scrolling. Um, or you can also type the application name in Cortana bar, which is available to find it quickly. We've also looked at the tile style menu and what you can do with the tiles. Uh, and we've looked at the Cortana bar uh, for doing some special assistant activities or to help you find documents on your device or to help you find the applications. We also looked at the taskbar and how you can pin applications to the taskbar or unpin applications from taskbar. Then we've looked at the status bar, which is to the right of the applications that are being pinned. Uh, and uh, we've looked at how you can drag and drop specific icons from the status bar um, and put them back and uh, onto the status bar itself. We've navigated and looked at the desktop area of Microsoft Windows 10. We've looked at what you can do with the icons by accessing, uh, by selecting the icon of the application and looking at the different options that are available. We looked at the desktop itself, uh, how you can organize things on the desktop, looked at the display settings and personalization settings. And then we've looked at the uh, File Explorer application uh, and we've looked at uh, what is available uh, from File Explorer, how you can um, change uh, uh, settings, change views, uh, and uh, how you can access Quick Access Bar, OneDrive, what's on this PC, libraries, and network. We've also looked at the settings of, for the applications, uh, and we've looked at them through Accessing Settings, which is the new version of Accessing Settings in Windows, and also the old way of Accessing Settings through Control Panel. If you like the content, please make sure to click the like button and share with your friends. Also, there's tons of information in the description of this video. Make sure to check it out. Make sure to check out my other relevant videos and subscribe to my YouTube channel. We have a lot of great stuff planned in the pipeline and I don't want you to miss any of it. And if you'd like to get notified about all the new stuff that are coming out, make sure to subscribe to my email list as well. All links are here on the screen. Make sure to click to stay in touch. Thanks again for watching.